so this is an uh, award exhibition. So when I got the award, uh, I obviously had the crisis that every artist has, like, what will I do um, for the Standard Bank art exhibition? Um, so in December of 2014, I was visiting my aunt and uh, one of the neighbors came and gave me this book um, on Gladys and Kujang. Um I'd known about Gladys and Kujang, but I've never ever taken a serious interest, to be honest, in her work. Um, there have been shows at the Jack, curated by a friend uh, who did a master's thesis on Gladys and Kujang. Um But this time, um, when this neighbor came to give the book to me, uh, my aunt was quite curious, like, hey, can I see the book? And she said, oh my God, I knew this woman. Oh, really? Okay, fine. And then we start to have a conversation about Gladys and Kujang. Um, and she recalls a story where she went to Gladys's house in 1971, 73, um, as a teenager, and seeing all these murals in her house. Um, and that became a curiosity for me as someone who had won the Standard Bank Young Artist of the Year exit show. Um, so I began doing some research, uh, went to the house, which is, I mean, the video over there, like, is pretty self-explanatory um, about my process and conversations with my aunt. Um, but because of the various challenges I was facing um, in trying to discover whether there's murals in this house or not, um, uh, I asked my aunt if she could uh, redraw the murals from memory, right, um, which I had seen in 1971. So what I did was, um, as you'll see in the video, uh, my aunt is making some drawings. I recreated the room uh, in the studio. So basically I measured the room in the house um, and then I built it in my studio um, and had my aunt recreate the drawings or the murals from memory based on what she had seen as a kid. Um, and my aunt is not an artist, by the way. She's never had any art experience or training whatsoever. Um, but I found it uh, quite an interesting exercise in terms of memory, memory work, uh, her recollecting, uh, because the first time we spoke, she spoke about colors only, as what she remembered. She only remembered colors. And then the next time I spoke to her, she remembered the river. Next time, she was like, oh, there was a river, of course, with a landscape, and then there were some houses. Um, it was a rural landscape. And then over time, she began to recall, obviously, because she'd seen, um, she'd last been there, like, 71. <clears throat> um, so th this interest then grew with Nkudlanj when I was doing the research. I enlisted the help of a professional conservator who normally works with the Italian Renaissance uh, frescoes and uh, murals in Italy, but she's based in Cape Town. Um, fortunately, she was able to come and work with me uh, in the house. Um, and in the meantime, while I was working on the project, uh, works by Gladys and Kuzanjo came up on auction. Um, so all the works that you see here of hers, I uh, was managed. Um, I managed to buy at an auction in London last year in March. Um, I didn't buy all the work that was on auction now, could only afford uh, a third of the work on auction. Um, but in the process, what I was doing with my aunt already, after she had recreated um, the murals, which you see in the video, um, I noticed that she was really, really, really uncomfortable in front of the camera. So I invited her back to the studio um, to work on the blackboards that you see here right now. Um, so those are her works. Um, so she came back into the studio, worked at her own time. Um, um, yeah, and I did little interventions in the work, not much. Sometimes there's no interventions at all. Sometimes, uh, for example, with the one at the far end, there's a lot of intervention in that work, but that's the most. And then the one here that you see, um, there's very, very minimal intervention in that piece. Um, but at the same time, while I was working um, on this Gladys narrative and the discovery, um, I had a Swiss-born curator and writer who came to me and um, offered me this footage that he had shot of um, 
Mangoba. Uh, Ernest Mangoba, just before he died, outside of Paris, the footage had never been seen before. He'd published um, the interview in various essay uh, catalogs and various book publications, but the actual footage itself had never been seen. Um, so when I was looking at the footage over and over, uh, which was in the period of December 2014, um, uh, it really occurred to me like how sad yet defined uh, Umang Noba was um, when I was listening to his story. <clears throat> Again, I mean, uh, Anas Mangloba is not an artist that I really took seriously um, uh, when I began making art, but when I was forced to kind of sit down with this interview that was done is when I really started thinking about what the things he was saying and um, then I went back to look at his work and then I did research, went back to look at his work, did more research. Um, and in fact, that's where the title of the exhibition came from, is having spent time looking at this interview. Um, so strategically, the interview, uh, half of it is lost. Um, and what I did was, because it be, it's been published already, I used uh, fragments from the, the published uh, interview uh, in the text, which is the, the pieces of paper that you see in the work, um, if you've seen it already. Um, so th those became like the two um, anchoring kind of um, um, two anchors for the exhibition, for the project. And then in the meantime, I was really interested to do something about Marikana, but uh, being the person that I am, I didn't want to be too obvious. Um, um, but also when Marikana happened, the first thing I could think about was um, a short story by R. 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 Lomo, which is called The Dog Killers. It was published in the early half of the 20th century. Um, and basically, it's almost like uh, in a short story. You should read it, um, actually. It's called The Dog Killers. Uh, it's available. Um, uh, details a, a narrative about this guy whom, um, who's a miner. And in the mines at the time, uh, the miners weren't allowed to have any dogs. But he had fallen in love with his dog. and. Um, Occasionally, the mine owners and managers would come and kill off all the dogs. So the character gets into a fight with one of these people because he loves his dog and he wants to protect it. And in the process, he himself is killed, um, which I find, found is a very interesting analogy uh, for black life at the time in the mines. And looking back in 2014 with the, the massacre of all the miners in Marikana, live on television, um, kind of, yeah, it had this strong resemblance of the dog killers and um, uh, raised questions about the political dispensation that we have right now. So this piece here is a, is a piece which is in, um, um, yeah, in honor of the dog killers after Ujom. And so is the, the floor piece over there. Um, and there we have uh, some set of Polaroids um, at the back. And those basically are detailing the process of while we were uncovering the mural uh, in uh, Gladys' uh, old house. Um, and conceptually, my interest in both the chalk, uh, which is the medium used for the blackboards and the Polaroids, is that Polaroids, um, unlike most photography, have they deteriorate at a very, very fast pace, um, which same as the works here, which are on the chalkboard. Um, and conceptually for me, it was a, became an interesting exercise in terms of memory work, like the idea that memory fades um, became interesting to me. And as a choice to use both Polaroid and chalk drawing, instead of getting my aunt to work in any other medium, like oil, for example, which is, which is long-lasting. Um, these became like uh, 
really important choices conceptually and strategically in terms of the materials that I've used for the exhibition.